Hello beer tubers and welcome to a very historic beer review. This is, I'm gonna say this from the get-go, this is not gonna be short because this is something I'm gonna rant a bit about because it's something I'm passionate and very nostalgic about. But I'm Peter the Master of Puppets, today joined by Henry the John Gerser. Yes, so today guys we're looking at George Gale's prize old ale. Galore! <laughs> Galore, yeah. <laughs> oh, Galore, really. We have five different Gale's beers here, or Gale's beers. So, uh, first of all, I want to give a big thanks to Manchester Marble Brewery over in the UK for helping me get this. Uh, it's nostalgic beer to me, we'll get into that later, but they were kind enough to uh, help me get some bottles because they have a web shop but they don't ship outside of the UK. They figured it out to ship it to me, but because the shipping was really expensive, they actually offered to send the bottles free of charge. So thanks a ton to... Uh, to Manchester Marble for that. Also thanks a ton to my subscriber Keith for getting me the Madeira version because um, it was sold out at Marble so they couldn't get it but he was able to provide it. So thanks a ton uh, for that dude and also thanks a ton to Best of Beers for actually finding bottles in their cellar of the very last uh, vintage of Prize Old Ale to ever be brewed at the original Horn Dean Gales Brewery. So if you don't know George Gale's Prize Old Ale, guys, this is a famous old ale from the UK, from England. Um, it was a historic beer, and it was made over a long period of time. Uh, uh, period of time. Now, old ale was a very uh, cool English beer style that is kind of extinct now. No one makes it, which is kind of a shame. Mm. Uh, there was different variations on it, but the way that they did it at uh, George Gale's was that they brewed the old ale, a stronger beer, and it was fermented in big oak vats and then transferred and, and then done with secondary fermentation with Brettanomyces and transfers into hogsheads, which is a big type of wooden barrel, and stored there until it had matured properly and the balances of flavors had me mellowed out nicely uh, so the breads wouldn't be too much. Yeah, yeah. So that was basically how they made it. And then they would uh, put it in bottles and put corks in. And they actually put corks in to the very end. They still used corks at the original brewery uh, in Horndeen. Uh, so a, a, a very interesting beer. I discovered this beer uh, when I was getting into craft beer when I was visiting the UK on a actually a trip with school, and we went on a tour at the Foes Brewery and I tried it there for the first time and it blew my mind back in the day. <laughs> this was one of the very last bottlings they had at Fuller's before their acquisition. I forgot to mention that, but Fuller's bought the brewery in 2006, closed the plant, and then they got some of the last bottles there and the very last um, Price Old Ale they had at George Gale's transferred into their own tanks mm. for safekeeping. And um, Fuller's released some kind of like re-releases of the beer since then, but uh, I think the last to come out was in 2007 or six or something like that. And I ah. think there's been some bottlings later, but that's been releases from that tank. I think it was something like that. Um, but when I was there back then, I bought that beer and tried it and it blew my mind. And they had two very special limited uh, editions Old Ale, because what George Gales was famous for was for making Old Ale, and they had two very famous limited edition bottles, which I've saved at my mom's place because they were quite historic for me, and they were the first beers that really blew my mind back in the day. I love that uh, you, you so kept I, them. I kept them for since 2006 when I was there, that's 13 years ago, or what, 12 years ago. Yeah. Um, so that, that's that's pretty crazy. So I kept them, and that was I got this very special brew, Trafalgar 200 Old Ale on 10% that they made for the anniversary of the Battle of Trafalgar, the 200 year anniversary. Mm. And then I got one, oh, this, there's a lot of bottles and stuff behind us, uh, Last Drop. And this was the very last blend of old ale to ever leave the George Gales Brewery, the original Hondine Brewery. Uh, I remember having this for New Year's back in the day before I started my channel and really being blown away by it. <laughs> uh, this was 9% produced in, or released in 16th of March, March 2006, I believe originally meant for the workers at the brewery. So what happened was that uh, Marble's Brewmaster is a very big fan of this beer, and he met John Keeling from Fuller's, and they had talks about how they wanted to bring Price Old Ale back to the public. So what happened was that Manchester Marble decided uh, to make this collaboration with Fuller's, and they brewed a batch of Old Ale according to the original mm. recipe, just aged in uh, regular stainless steel tanks because they didn't have the oak floaters to age it in, but they want to improve, uh, make this barrel character, and they wanted to use this uh, the same type of bread flavor you would get from the Price Old Ales. So what would they got mm. was Fuller's offered to give them the very last tank of Price Old Ale they had in storage, kept since 2006, from the original plant, <laughs> to inoculate the beer with that and then put it into different barrels, yeah. being bourbon barrels, Madeira wine barrels, 
uh, Pinot Noir, Noir barrels yeah. and uh, Barbera wine barrels. Yeah. So they aged them in these barrels for about a year and uh, did you know very careful notes on took much care about the beers mm. and released them uh, last year. Uh, it was brewed in 2006. And we have this entire lineup to try now. Yes. Along with the very last bottle of George Gales to come out yep. of the Gales Brewery, or the Prize Old Ale. So long intro there, a lot of history. <laughs> A big history for me. I'm really excited about this. It's probably not gonna be beer that's gonna blow your mind because it's a very traditional old school beer, but it's very cool. And as uh, the brewmaster from Manchester Marble says, it would have been cool to see uh, how the British beer scene would have been now if breweries still kept making Britain and Mice's Old Ale. Yeah. And yeah, not many breweries make it like that anymore. So this is pr pretty cool. So and then this is this will be the first the first and the last time for me trying it. Yeah. <laughs> It will, because uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't think they're planning on making this again. Because I don't think they saved any, or maybe they did. I'm not entirely sure. Because no. they would need, you know, stuff of the barrel aged versions to inoculate into a new batch to make it mm. authentically. So this might just be the very, very last goodbye for Price Old Ale, which is a little bit sad because it's such a historic beer style. But I really yeah. hope some, you know, modern breweries would try and take up the Old Ale in this matter. But we're gonna do this by ABV, first the new ones, and finish off with the original bottle. So the first bottle we're gonna be trying is the lowest string, yeah. which is the um, Barbera wine barrel aged version. Uh, I believe this is uh, Italian wine. So we got the Barbera prize old ale poured, mm. a little bit of chunks in there, uh, but a nice kind of like dark cover ruby color. Yeah. Looks like brownish, a little ale, 10.4%, yeah. kind of a tan-ish brown looking head. Got a so, huge head to Yeah, some of them, some of them, the Britannomyces has evolved a bit differently. Like the Madeira really gushed <laughs> when we poured it. Yeah. Well, let's check out the aroma. Wow. Oh yeah, very vineous. Yeah. Oh, it smells, it smells last smells. time I had a bottle of Price Old Ale, it was one of the really old ones, and it was so port wine like. This is much more fresh and vibrant. Yeah. Actually, also historically in the 19th century, when this was really popular, uh, what breweries would do, or breweries, uh, not uh, bars and stuff would do, because the beer sometimes was so bready or so intense in flavors, they would mix it with mild ale to make it uh, a bit more drinkable, because some customers didn't like it. Uh, and mild ale is also a British style that's almost died out. That's also one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this, because it was the British beer that got me into craft beer. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty but, uh, cool. Yeah, this smells really nice. It's very nice. dry, vineyard yeah. character. A bit malty and malt sweetness yeah, as well. Caramel, yeah, caramel, toffee. The Brettamyces is there on the back end. Yeah, uh, it's got I mean, a little it, bit of a funkiness without being crazy, but yeah, it it it, you it, it smells a bit sour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you know Brettamyces. Yeah, 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 I don't know yeah. what strain of Brettamyces they use, but but the funk is mm -hmm. from the original Price Old Ale, which is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but then there is a bit of cherry, dark fruity notes. Yeah, cherry, yeah. Caramel and the vineous notes, but it smells nice. Let's try yeah, it. Let's try it. Cheers. Mmm. Wow. Oh, that's is, really nice. Very is, dry vineyard character. Yeah, as yes, you said, port wine. Yeah. Port wine. But yeah. not, not crazy port wine. Not Just not wait crazy, until yeah. we try the old one from oh, 2006. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be crazy oxidized. But, uh. Mmm. Mm. Nice caramel, toffee, mm. vineyard. Yeah. Like, slight, not super hefty red wine flavor, but a. No. Yeah. Like but it's in the back, some, yeah. the, the back now. Almost, yeah, it's got uh, the back tanniny pump. red wine flavor as well. Yeah. Drying oaky finish, charry oak. Mm. Yeah, char uh, yeah. Caramel, yeah, and then a soft Britannomyces funk. I think if you set, set on these bottles, mm. it would evolve a bit more. And I can definitely see connotations <laughs> to Utbrunn and Fl Flemish sours. Yeah, yeah. And Flemish old beer, because yeah. it's a bit similar, because I was also aged in oak vets. So there is some connotation from, for, you know, with Belgian beer in these. I totally agree. I, 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 I actually did think a bit about the, the Flemish red ales. Yeah, yeah, because of the bread character. Yeah, exactly. But I actually thought it, expected it to be a bit more sour from the aroma. But. Yeah, I think a lot of people expect more sourness with bread, but some yeah. strains of bread are not sour whatsoever. Yeah. They're just funky. Yeah. And this definitely has a little bit of a musty funkiness without being a ton. Mm. Okay, so we're going a bit up in strength. This is 10.6. This is the bourbon barrel aged version. This is a bit darker, actually. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a bit more dark ruby red. It has a yeah. bit of yeast chunks. I wonder if some of these chunks are from the original uh, beer. <laughs> I, I didn't imagine. Uh, but yeah, a bit of a haziness, a kind of beige head. Let's yeah. check out the aroma on the bourbon version. Oh, that's vastly different. It's much more boozy. Much more boozy, or yeah. boozy. It's spirity. It's, you definitely yeah. smell that bourbon spirit. It's a bit more fudgy as well. it's much more oaky. And it's not as uh, bread forward. It's not as funky. No, no. 
It's a bit more sweet and and, 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 and fudgy. Yeah, 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 yeah. More and more caramels than dark yeah, fruit. Yeah. And I think that's because the barrel lends to more flavors like that. Yeah. It smells nice though. But also it smells so, like it's gonna be dry. And there is yeah. some kind of dry, musty thing in the back. Yeah. Uh, it is a bit oaky. Yeah, yeah. It, more oaky than the Yeah, Barbera. for sure. Yeah. And it's got a bit more sharpness to yeah. it. Should try. Yeah. That's right. Cheers. Mmm. That is different. Much different. Much much more different. That's much. actually quite fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the it's, other it's one was the so same beer, but different barrel. But the other one tastes more towards what I remember from George Gale's Bright Old Ale. Yeah. When I had it back in the day. Yeah. This is a bit more... It's, 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 it's still a similar flavor, but the bourbon provides a vastly different flavor. Because the, as I remember, the Bright Old Ale is a very vinous and, and dark fruity and tasting like port wines or something like yeah. dessert wines. Whereas this is a bit more sweet and it's even got like a bit, maybe a hint of a buttery flavor like diacetyl or something, but yeah. just, it's just light. You often find that in very old school British beers. And then lots of dry oak and bourbon, mm. but it's not too hot, I lots think, of on dry the flavor. Mm -hmm. The more I'm sipping on it, the more I'm getting like raisins and prunes mm. and stuff. The other one yeah, had more fresh, more fresh dark fruits. This is more dried maybe. Oh. And definitely also some caramel. I don't know. I'm 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 kind of a sucker for like very oaky beer. Yeah. So you like that? I it's like also that. got vanilla. This one. The other one didn't really vanilla. Yeah. yeah this has got some vanilla. Caramel. Well, yeah. Bourbon flavors. It's also quite nice. They're very drinkable though for for their EBBs. Oh yeah. The oh, mouthfeel yeah. on the other one was oh, like yeah, medium, you, and this is also like medium. Maybe you, this is a bit more chewy. You don't get that at all. I mean, you, you get a bit of heat mm -hmm. heat, heat in, in in your throat, but that's it's very nice actually. Very it's drinkable. also quite nice. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're moving on to the Madeira barrel age version, and this one is a similar color yeah, to, sort of a, the, to the, the bourbon, bourbon. Uh, yeah. hazy, kind of dark ruby colored, uh, a bit more brown more actually, actually more, more, maybe more copper, yeah. and again a slightly tan head on this mm. one, and this one was 11.9 I think, no, 11, 10.9 sorry, Ooh, so we're so jumping we're, up, it's interesting how up, much yeah. alcohol the barrel, they absorb from the yeah, barrels, yeah. the different versions, but let's check out the aroma. Oh yeah, this smells like sweet Madeira wine. I just was in Madeira a, a couple of weeks ago. Or was it last week? No, yeah, two weeks ago now. No, last week. Last week. Last I was week. On, on, on Madeira. Uh, <laughs> oh, and really, and we, we drank Madeira yeah, wine. Yeah. So I definitely smell that. It's like this sweet desserty wine. It's not as tart as the uh, Barbera. No, no, no. It's actually the sweetest aroma so far, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Madeira wine is also very sweet. It okay. comes in like sweet, rich, or rich and dry versions. Yeah. And then like a medium of both, but... It's got that sweet, rich kind of, it's very sweet, raisiny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Madeira winey, or even... I mean, this, this doesn't really s smell that sour as well. No, no. It, the sweetness hides that a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, it does. On these. And then it, you're definitely also getting a bit of um, like the, the caramel and the, like, the really dry, dark yeah. fruits. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because this and the bourbon lends to more dry, dark fruit, yeah. whereas the, 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 yeah, bar the Babera, bar Babera yeah, yeah. lends to like fresh, yeah. dark fruits. Yeah. Let's try it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's really smooth. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's stronger, but it's the one yeah. with the least alcohol flavor. That's true, actually. But the, I, I, it's not as sweet on the flavor. There's definitely Madeira wine yeah. flavor. But it's I don't know, maybe more. it's a dry Madeira wine barrel. I'm, I'm not sure. I think this was first. It said on the website, uh, there's a very great blog post you should check out about this on Marble's website, where they talk about the bourbon barrel fill. There's even... Uh, part of the the water treatment for the beer to to hit the water they use at Gales and there's <laughs> part of the recipe and everything. I think this is. A bit it feels more... a bit more chewy because it's not yeah. as dry. So it's got a chewy mouthfeel. It does mm. have some dryness, but not as much. The bread character is stif still mostly, I think, shine yeah. through in the Barbera, Barbera version. This is there a little bit more lightly, and then you're definitely also getting like the dark fruit candy, like candy dry dark fruit flavors. I get some a bit more bitterness. Yeah, Maybe. a bit more bitterness too. That could be from the oak, like tanniny bitter yeah. flavors. And then um, I'm also getting a bit of vanilla on this one. Yeah. But that's also the, the fortified wines that usually mm. had a bit oh, yeah. more flavor of, of things like that nature. And then also caramel, kind of toffee notes. Mm. It's it's funny how like... They're I... much more drinkable versions, really. If you think of Old Ale nowadays and yeah. you think of the brewery's anniversary, which are just crazy modernized versions that are very good, these are much more drinkable. Okay. Yeah. And you have had some of the old deals, I think. I've had some. I'm half. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, yeah, this is also quite nice. I mean, <laughs> that this is almost like eleven percent. Is yeah, it's, it's hugely quite amazing. Drinkable. Hugely drinkable. Quite amazing. 
So now we're really jumping up in alcohol content. This is 11.6. Uh, this is crazy. This is the Pinot Noir barrel aged version. Uh, and that is the darkest, I think, too. Uh, oh, yeah, that's many chunks in here as well. Oh, uh, yeah, I see some floaties. But it's a <laughs> similar kind of dark, kind of coverish color. It's actually quite. Beautiful red. Yeah, this one looks nice. It's a bit it's more a bit clear. More, yeah, so it's, it's a bit it more clear, yeah. very nice. And the head on there is also a little bit better. It's kind of like beige as well, but mm. what's it called? The aroma, aroma on the Pinot. Oh, version. Are. Ooh. Bassett's Wine Gums oh, yeah. Galore. <laughs> That's quite nice. That's actually very decent. Yeah, uh, it's got some more caramelly topping notes. Yeah. Actually, I expected it to have much more like wine character, just like the oh, yeah. Barbera version. But it got, it, but it's it, there. It, it's 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 got more wine than the the previous two. Yeah, the Madeira. Yeah. Uh, so a good amount of caramel, toffee sweetness, and the dark fruits and all that. But yeah. Let's try it. Cheers. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, oaky. Oh, it's Pinot Noir is also like a really hefty wine, mm. and you can really feel that. It's oh, much yeah. more hefty vineyard flavor. That's, the other, the Barbera is much more yeah. light and acidic and more yeah, bread forward. Yeah. So I think that's maybe the bread is a bit more developed in that. Whereas this is a bit more powerful, powerful, hefty, strong red mm. wine flavor yeah. with dry oak and then caramel. It has a, again, a hint of like a butterscotch thing, which could be diacetyl, but yeah, it's common in British beers, uh, at least the old school ones. And then, uh, yeah, caramel, toffee, mm. lots yeah. of dark fruit. This is more fresh dark fruits again. Yeah, just it like so it's almost as if the fresh wine barrels. And not that like it's, the fortified more, wine and yeah. bourbon are not you know dried. It's fun flavors, that, but fresh. That this has the highest percentage, but it's most comparable with the Barbera, which mm -hmm. has the lowest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is a bit In fun. terms of, I I love this kind of thing. You take the same beer, put it on different barrels, and you get vastly different, vastly results. different yeah, yeah. characteristics it's, it's, of the beer. It's really fun. And lastly, before we rate everything, we're gonna have a taste of the original bottle. Uh, released in 2005 from the George Gales Brewery with the cork and everything. Cork was intact. It was a bit hard to get out, but so this is old as beer. No carbonation. It is really <laughs> dark. So this is going to be really <laughs> oxidized. When we popped this, it was just oxidized, crazy aromas in the room. Now, oxidation can be good, especially if it's old in beers like this. So if it's very oxidized in the right way, it usually is with time. If it's oxidized over a longer period of time, you get lots of port wine okay. flavors and, and like these fortified wine flavors. Whereas if it's a really young ox oxidation, yeah. it can really taste a lot like cardboard. Yeah. And it, especially if it's in terms of hoppy beer, it just turns the beer into complete shit. So it's, <laughs> a, it's a bit of a lottery sometimes. Yeah, it can be, unless you store it, you know, at proper temperatures. And yeah, yeah. But this is, you know, very murky look it looks like muddy water or something but it's still you can see a similar color that kind of look at that ruby yeah, yeah let's check out the aroma on the original one Whoa. oh this smells like this almost Whoa. smells like a, a, a mix of port wine and mead yeah, or something yeah yeah I'm mead getting, i'm getting loads of honey oh yeah loads of honey and like port wine and dried figs but you also get, i don't know if you caramel syrupy notes I get a bit of cardboard as well, to be honest. And maybe it's because I told you. I'm yeah, not I think. I think. I'm, it almost. Uh, it's got like oaky notes too. Yeah. But it's not like that bread and mice is forward. But no. maybe that flavor is completely just died yeah. out over time. I'm not sure. It's actually it smells like this aged quite nicely. Yeah. Cheers. That's not too. That's not. That's too, not doing too that, well anymore. No. no. <laughs> but it's fun to try the very. You know. The original one you can see similar flavors yeah. i'd say of all the new ones it's almost most probably most similar to the madeira yeah because it's a bit sweeter this one yeah it is uh, but it has the same kind of jammy vinous kind of wine like flavor yeah, as yeah, all yeah, the others yeah. they all have some kind of like vinous dark fruit flavor and this has that for sure but it's it's got some butter and it's like diacetyl for sure and then it's quite oxidized yeah it's too bad it's not very very good. I don't think it's amazing or no. great or anything, no. but I, I'd say if you open this bottle years before this, it yeah. would be a yeah. lot better. Um, I definitely prefer the new ones, interesting. Yeah. Enough. But it's still got some nice, kind of interesting, old, dusty, Oh yeah. kind of like dusty, woody, funky mm -hmm. flavors and like like barely dry. You know, I can see the, the rye bread, yeah. almost like toasty, yeah. almost like toasty, lightly. Yeah chocolatey or something like that yeah or not maybe not chocolate like almost like chocolate malt just i get like a like a toasted rye bread mm -hmm. like just before it goes dark it's also a little oh, bit oh, savory yeah. interesting like it's got mm -hmm. a little bit of yeah salty yeah mm -hmm. 
when I rated this, I think last time I reviewed it, I gave it like an 89 or a 90. And I think when I had it back in the day fresh, I probably would have rated this like 93, 4. Maybe even when it was in its prime in the special variants, like a 95 yeah. back in the day. But let's get to the grades. So the original one here, I'd probably say like for me, like in uh, 83, 4 or something. It's something yeah. that's nice kind of still to drink. Sip on, split a bottle a few people, but it's not something, you know... That's very tasty, at least this bottle, but this is something that's going to vary a lot from bottle to bottle. But I can still enjoy this as it is right now. But maybe it's also because I have a nostalgic relationship to the beer. <laughs> so I'm going to go 83 on the very old bottle here. I am going 80, but that's only because it's a bit fun, nah. to be honest. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun it's a fun beer to have. But yeah. it's it's also fun to try these like yeah, crazy old beers. I think it the old, I can't. What's the oldest? I the thing the oldest beer I ever tried was from eighty nine, but uh, no, yeah, eighty nine. I think so. But hmm. what about the others here? So we talked about favorites. Well, let's talk about uh, favorites. For me, the best is the Barbera, and then I'd say Madeira, and then Pinot, and then Bourbon is my least favorite. Least favorite. I think they're all very nice. I think mine is Madeira, and then the the Barbera, and then the um, the Pinot Noir, and then the Bourbon. Yeah, it's funny we agree with the Bourbon being the least favorite, but that's also the one that's the most like hot. But um, so rating wise, I'll say like on the Barbera for me, like a 93, 94, 94, mm. then a ninety two on the Madeira, ninety one on the Pinot, and 90 on the bourbon they're not gonna jump all the way up in the high 90s no. but i think they're still really nice beers and i think they're definitely worth a shot and it's tasting very very close to what fresh uh, or kind of fresh you can't really say fresh old ale but what <laughs> kind of fresh prize old ale tasted like i'm i'm just giving them a name between 91 and 93 yeah <laughs> so uh this was fun yeah should we try and make a blend of the new ones and, and be back. Should we do a cuvee? Yeah, that could be pretty fun. Let's do it. Okay, guys, so we're back. We made a cuvee. We had to do this. <laughs> so we blended kind of what we thought in terms of what we liked the most of the new ones. And then just for fun measure, we put in the slightest squeeze of the 2005 bottling of Prize Old Ale. So this is the Prize Old Cuvee <laughs> Ale. So let's check out the aroma. Mm, smells pretty interesting, but for some reason, this I, the first thing I thought of was, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, I get the Madeira. Uh, amber, like the amber, like the mineral, the amber thing. There's some mineral in oh, there. Yeah. But yeah, the Madeira I'm getting for sure too. But I put a little bit more of the Barbera, so I'm getting a bit more of the kind of tart, bready funk. Yeah. But actually, it does not smell too bad at all with no. all these blended. <laughs> mm, interesting. Um, funkiness is there yeah. too, for sure. But it, it's 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 a, it's a different beer again now. Yeah, yeah. of course it's a beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is our own little Solera. Let's it's, try. It's, it's, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> I prefer them separate. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but we're also not master blenders. You know, when no. they do these Solera blends, usually they have a master blender and they sit with tons of glasses. And mix um, until they hit something that they think is perfect. Yeah, yeah. So it's really hard to do. This was our first This was, try. you know, by eye. <laughs> I've done it before with IPAs and stuff. And it's it's fun, but it's very hard to do. So, hey, yeah, this, yeah. This, is, this is not my favorite. No. I, it's not bad. It's, I, I definitely prefer it over the very first, you know, on first the original bottling. The, yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. But this was a fun video to do, guys. I hope yeah. you enjoyed it. I know it was really, really long, so sorry for that, but I hope you'll manage. This was a nostalgic video for me. Again, thanks a ton to Manchester Marble. Mm. Thanks a ton to Keith, and thanks a ton to Best of Beers for getting all this for this video. Uh, oh, I had to do this. Even though they're not gonna blow your mind, this is something for me that's a little bit kind of like a bucket list beer-wise because of its nostalgia with me. So I hope you guys will try and, and figure out getting some of these because I think it's definitely yeah. worth a shot, especially if you wanna taste a chunk of uh, or have a sip of, uh, of British beer history. So um, if you guys had the chance to try any of the new rebrewed versions of Gale's Prize Old Ale from Fuller's and Manchester Marble, let us know what you thought of them, which one was your favorite, mm. and do you have a favorite old ale that's still being produced by modern breweries or just old breweries? 
Uh, that's really good. It would be nice to hear because it's not a style you find very often. So let us know, guys. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, and Twitter and Instagram, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And we're going to say cheers. Just bye. And see you guys in another beer video.